Hello again, welcome. This is Professor Geta Pujol coming from UCF and welcoming you to our next video on trade secret law. Now, um, here I just want to apply what we've learned to the movie The Social Network as it depicts uh, Zuckerberg launching the original Facebook homepage on February 4th, uh, 2004. And you know, the movie, the um, character, Army uh, uh, Hammond, who plays both of the Winklevoss twins, actually, he, you know, they keep insisting, along with their business partner, Divya Narendra, that Mark stole our idea. Did he? You know, in the actual, and I'll be showing you these documents in the uh, fourth module, I'll show you the original complaint that the Winklevoss twins filed against Mark Zuckerberg, them and their partner, Divya. Um, and I'll show you um, a sworn statement that they submitted to the court uh, by their original computer programmer, Victor Gao, who uh, is the one who met with Zuckerberg and shared the source code information with Zuckerberg. Um, you know, in other words, all I'm saying here at the beginning is that, you know, a very strong, colorable claim can be made that, in fact, yes, Zuckerberg stole their idea, stole their source code, and uh, when he um, created the Facebook. Now, um, you know, and there's a whole bunch of ethical implications there, you know. But here I want to talk about the law. And I'm hoping to persuade you that it's going to be a very uphill battle for, um, you know, had the Winklevoss twins taken their case to court, it would have been a very uphill battle to actually prove uh, uh, trade secret um, misappropriation, um, theft of their idea, theft of their trade secrets. Why? Not for lack of evidence. They do have a sworn statement by their original computer programmer um, that in fact he met with Zuckerberg when Zuckerberg promised to you know help them with their website and that he shared with them all of the secret source code that they had developed up to that point in time. Um, no, go back to the original definition of what a trade secret is. It's got to be something, an, you know, an idea, some information that's commercially valuable, that, he's, that has independent economic value, that somebody would be willing to pay something for. But at the, also, it has to be um, um, protected. The owner of that trade secret has to take reasonable steps or reasonable efforts to keep the idea a secret. And I'll just tell you what that usually means in practice is that a court is going to want to see a non-disclosure agreement. The court is going to want to see some affirmative evidence that the person alleging that they're the owner of the trade secret and that somebody misappropriated the trade secret um, you know, used it without authorization or disclosed it to a third party without authorization, um, they're going to want to see um, something that that other party promised to keep it a secret. And this is why in the business world, especially in startups, or when you um, go to work for a company that has valuable trade secrets, you're generally asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Or if you're starting a company, before you share your idea with potential investors or potential partners, um, and uh, bringing on new employees, it's a good idea to have them sign a non-disclosure agreement. There's another good example of why, you know, um, legal advice and uh, legal representation is really an essential business expense. Whether you are um, an existing company or starting up a new company, because um, if you want to protect your intellectual property law, because intellectual property law, uh, there's so many different types of intellectual property rights. And because these rights are protected both by federal and state law, you want somebody uh, knowledgeable who can help you or your company protect those intellectual property rights. To go back to um, the Facebook and the original lawsuit between Connect You, which was owned by the Winklevoss twins and their partner Divya Narendra, and Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg and his partners and his co-founders, um, you know, they're... I looked at the record, there's no non-disclosure agreement. Now, I said it's an uphill battle, but not a completely fruitless battle. Because at the same time, I will tell you, you know, according to Victor Gao's declaration, they did not share any of this secret information with Zuckerberg until after Zuckerberg had promised to uh, help them with their website. Later, in part four of this course, we'll see, well, was that promise legally enforceable? Um, so you could argue that that is a reasonable step you know, not sharing it with someone until they make that promise. That's not a bad argument. Um, the other point I could make maybe in defense of the Winklevoss twins is that, um, you know, all these, all these guys are in college. 
Um, you know, and they're young, and you know, Zuckerberg has a reputation of a hacker, you know, already at this young age with face mash and some other things he's been involved with. Um, you know, maybe you're not gonna stop and think about having someone sign a non-disclosure agreement before you do business with them. But as you can see, um, that really affected the um, settlement value of the case. Uh, we'll say now, we'll say more about that litigation. Many other allegations were made in the Winklevoss twins and I've reserved part four of the course to really look at that complaint and look at the merits of those allegations. But because the trade secret misappropriation or trade secret theft is really the heart and soul of the Winklevoss complaint, um, I just wanted to talk about that now. All right, thank you for your attention. Have a good day and um, I'll see you next week. Take care.